Right, welcome to the online course and this is project one which I've got sketched um, as you can see I'm just getting rid of any little rubber marks because we don't want to have them on the paper because sometimes they can cause marks in the watercolour so I'm just checking that there isn't any and uh, you can see that I've got the mountains uh, sketched and uh, I've popped the posts in as well and roughly where the water is going to be and this is the sketch just to start with and uh, you can just see in between this is a little tip just here here in between that I've rubbed out the marks so that I then create some lovely softness between each valley of the mountains and uh, we've got the paper taped down it's just taped with uh, masking tape and uh, I've got the paint ready and the colours that we're going to use are cobalt blue, permanent rose, raw sienna and burnt sienna. So just four colours. So we've really got three primaries, which is the blue, the red and the yellow of the raw sienna. And that's all that we're going to work with today. We've got a, a nice selection of brushes, not too many. And... Uh, if you haven't got the exact brushes just use what you do have um, but just getting a couple of decent brushes is, is pretty good and I don't have masses of brushes um, I tend to use quite, I, I use this one a lot as you can see and I've had this maybe 10 years and still still fantastic and then we've got a, a larger 12 brush we've got a round 8 and uh, a couple of riggers and then I've got this little Chinese brush which I use quite a lot as well which is quite a nice little brush and then the flat synthetic and that's all that we're going to do use so first of all I'm going to start with so I've got my instructions for the online course and uh, I've actually printed them out you don't need to print them out but uh, here we go and uh, you can use it on a tablet, on a phone, just whatever suits you. Um, so off we go. And uh, it says about having the, the sketch all pre prepared. And uh, then we're going to start with two watery mixes. One which is the raw sienna, which I'll mix up the raw sienna. So quite a nice amount of water. And just touch into the wall into the raw sienna there we go and we want this to be fairly pale we don't want it to be too strong so if it is very strong put too much paint in you just need to put a little bit more water so more water and that is the raw sienna wash so just give me a brush a little wash and then I'm going to mix a cobalt blue with a tiny touch of permanent rose. And be careful with permanent rose. It's a strong colour, as all reds are. So you need about a quarter of um, the red compared to the other pigments. So just a tiny touch. Again, just touching in. See that maybe was a touch too much. So just going back, back into the blue, give my brush another wash and that's quite nice. So first of all, I'm going to dampen the paper and it says dampen all the sky and the mountains down to the horizon line, which is the lake line. So with the hake into the water and if you find that you've your water's a little bit coloured from mixing your paint, get some clean water. Clean water is clean, wa is clean water colours. If you're painting with really dirty water, you'll start to get dirty water colours. So just bringing this down nice and evenly. Hopefully not too many pools of water. We don't want the, uh, we don't want the uh, water colours sitting puddles. Sometimes you get a little line going around the puddle and uh, you're going to learn all the joys of watercolour painting. 
So I'm just bringing that down to the horizon line. Make sure it's all damp, nice and even. And then with the hake, I'm going to go straight into the raw sienna mixture, loading the paint up. And it says to uh, take the raw sienna mix and paint into the centre of the sky and over the mountains. So into the centre of the sky and then down into the mountains. Nice and evenly. Load the brush up with more paint. And sometimes I do paint in the direction of the mountain. So that if there are any lines or anything, they are probably where I want them to be. Right, so nice and even. And that's the raw sienna. Then into the blue. And then I'm just going to paint into a little bit of the sky, just letting it just merge into the, the damp paper. Give my brush a little wash and you can just move your board slightly about and by doing this you just get the paint to merge together a little bit better sometimes so i'm just moving the board about right and that is all that we're going to do for the first stage. So what we're going to do now is we're going to dry this and then uh, come back and paint in the mountains. So for drying, what you can do, you can either let it dry by itself, go and make yourself a nice cup of coffee, um, or you can just dry it with a hairdryer. When you dry it with a hairdryer, be careful. Don't get the nozzle and fire it all over. I tend to, if I do dry it with a hairdryer, I dry from quite high up and try and do it very evenly, just so it merges again nice and softly. Right, let's, uh, I'll go and get this dry and then I'll come back and then we're going to start and paint some of the mountains. Right, so we've got our paper dry and now we're going to just paint in this far mountain. So we're on to stage two. And uh, we need the paper to be dry. And we're going to just put this little mountain in. And uh, what we want to do, we want to have it so it's merging into the dampened paint. So we're going to just dampen water, sorry. So give the brush a good wash, make sure it's nice and clean. And this is with the smaller brush. And I'm just dampening underneath with the clean water, very softly. Don't do it too hard. If you do it too hard, you might even take the paint underneath away. So very softly, just underneath, putting clean water on. So that just goes on. And then with the colour that we used in the sky, Maybe add just a little bit of water, just to give it a little bit less colour. And then we're going to just paint in the little shape in the back mountain. And we want this one to be fairly pale because we've got quite a lot of mountains that we're going to paint. And uh, one little tip is I often use the rubber just to put the paper the board on a slight angle so that the paint does naturally just blend down so give that a little dampen into there wash the brush again dampen to there and that's all we need to do that's one little mountain painted dead easy so we're going to let this dry and then we're going to uh, come and paint this next layer in. Right, so we've got this section dry 
and now we're going to paint a bigger mountain so we want to make a little bit more paint so give you your paint palette a good old stir a little bit of water to it and then we're going to add some more blue and a touch of the permanent rose remember just a tiny little bit whoops you see it can go mad and we don't want to get this too strong so if the colour is too strong we put some more water to it right put that brush down and then with the smaller brush I'm just going to dampen underneath I could even do this actually if I wanted with uh, my hake because it's a quite a, a bigger area than that I'm just going to just just dampen clean water very softly just underneath so where I'm dampening is where I want it to be misty right there we go so uh, just a little bit more actually it load the brush with the paint and then we're just going to follow a little bit of the pencil line letting it merge into the paint bits are it's quite handy having a little bit of paper towel just to get rid of things which are on the brush sometimes so just bringing this round and I'm not too worried that that's gone into the water because what I'm going to do is I'm going to just dampen and get rid of that, that little line there you go give your brush another wash And two paintings never end up the same with watercolours. They're always different. You can never totally control watercolours, but I think that that, at times, is the joy of watercolour myself. It's going to soften just a little bit up there. Give the brush another wash. And I'm actually just bringing this down to the horizon line, the dampened water. So I'm just letting it blend in all together. So we can see now what we've got. We've got, um, we've got a little bit of colour in the sky, which is nice. We've got the sky, the uh, clouds coming down, and uh, we've got our first mountain, which is nice and pale, and then we've got the second mountain coming in, which is just a little bit stronger in colour. And we've got this lovely mist area in here. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give this another dry and then come back and then we're going to start and paint the other mountains in. So we've got uh, our second mountain dry and uh, we're just going to do a little bit coming down here and again softly um, blending into the bottom of the mist. And uh, I've got some clean water. I think it's about time and you might need some clean water. So I'm just dampening again, just underneath. But you get such lovely effects. It's quite nice in a nice amount of mist in this picture. We get a little bit of mist in the Lake District. It's quite a misty day today. So back into the cobalt blue, permanent rose. Again, just watching out for that uh, permanent rose overtaking. It doesn't matter though, if it does, it's absolutely fine. Just a touch of water to it just to dilute it a little bit and then this is just a just going through for the next mountain 
And this one might be just a little bit less painted, not as much detail maybe. A little bit of softness coming through. So with the other brush, the round brush, I'm just going to blend into just to soften the colour. You've got to be fairly speedy at this. You can see that this is starting to dry actually. And if you're using the hairdryer a bit, which I have today, you'll find that your paper gets warm. So when you come to doing your next layer, um, obviously it does need to be fairly wet, does the paint that you put on. Otherwise, uh, you'll end up getting a few, what we call cauliflowers. And uh, I'm sure I might have some along the way today, so uh, if I get some, I'll give you a shout. Right, so I'm just softening that. And again, that is just the next layer coming through. And I quite like how this is doing some magical things. That is one of the joys of watercolour. Uh, it isn't about sometimes controlling it. It's about letting letting the, the paints do the magic. Right, so... Uh, Give this another little dry and then we've got the next mountain range which is a little bit deeper which is going to really throw back the rest. Right so we've got this mountain dry all in here and we've got some gorgeous effects going on here which I quite like and uh, if you find as well that you've got some pencil lines showing um, at the finished painting, when you've finished, we can uh, just rub those out with a pencil, with a rubber. Um, so don't worry if you have got any little pencil lines showing. So back into the, with a big brush, back into the cobalt blue, the permanent rose, and just maybe add a tiny touch of burnt sienna. Just a little bit. So we're wanting just that little bit stronger colour this time. Touch your water to that and again. Right, and then I'm going to soften underneath again. I'll do it with the hook. It's a nice soft brushes the hook. Just softening. This little section here down to where the trees are the more you, the more of the paper that you soften into the above mountain the more mist you'll you'll get which is quite nice right so with the brush and sweeping down and you'll notice that I, I once I've painted one section, I tend to move on to the next. So just painting, coming down, bringing this slowly down. We're making a few little tree shapes along the way. And then I'm just going to get the other brush and again, just dampen it. So just softening, especially into this little bit here quickly. And then where the two are going to meet, softening to here. Sometimes the more that you mess about with it, the worse it becomes. So it's best to just let it dry occasionally and hopefully yeah, something magical will happen. So uh, that's that little side done and uh, I think actually while I've still got this while this is dry uh, I'm just going to just dampen underneath here and just bring this other mountain down as well at the same time so I'm just going to soften underneath this side and uh, hopefully your paintings are coming on well 
and load the brush up again with the paint so load the brush with lots of paint and then sweeping down the next uh, mountain shape and I'm just going to soften again just underneath So lots of water when you're softening but be careful of going into this section with the water because if you go into here what will happen is you'll open up the the paint that you've put on and it'll cause what we cla class as a cauliflower right so I'm just going to bring that down to the horizon line so it's nice and tidy just in case there's any bits of color that to come down and we're going to let that dry Right, I think it is time for a well-earned coffee break. Right, we're on to the, the next stage. And I've just put some masking tape along the horizon line. Now, I do that because uh, I haven't got a steady hand to do the, the very close edge. I also don't want to have to be worried about getting this exactly right because sometimes that can stop drying. Um, and I can be a bit looser with my painting uh, by having this line just to work with. And uh, I find that it, it works quite well. The masking tape that I use as well is quite a low adhesive one. Uh, it's probably a cheapish one, that's why. And um, so it, it doesn't, it shouldn't, I won't say it doesn't, it shouldn't take the paper surface off when you remove it. So uh, it's just popped down, but it is a low adhesive one. So now we're going to start to just paint some of these um, little mountain trees and things which are, are just coming along the foreshore. Again, just with a little bit stronger colour as we're going along. And you might go to a smaller brush, maybe you might have a, a nice size number eight with a nice point. So I'm just mixing up the colour and uh, I'm going to just start and uh, painting some of these little tree lines along here. So I'm using the colour that I had before, which is just down there, to give a little blob there. And uh, just get rid of that. There you go. Right, so load the brush, and then I'm just going to just paint in just a little bit these little lines. So I'm just moving the brush up and down, making it a little bit varied. And then with the other brush at the same time, give the brush a wash and I'm just going to introduce some water. So that just dilutes your wash in places. So doing it at the same time. If I left it to do, to well, by the time I've finished all along here, probably find that that bit had dried. It does dry quite fast, so you may be starting to get used to um, the watercolour a little bit and what it does. Give the brush another wash. There we go. And I might have uh, a little bit maybe uh, along here. I can see actually I've got a little bit of tree line there, but uh, I might just ignore that and just do a little bit in here. So... Touch stronger colour, cobalt blue, permanent rose, touch of burnt sienna. So just working up and down. Now this is just going to overlap what I've just put on. Again, just softening the paint with the other brush. So working with two brushes at the same time, softening into that paint, wash your brush. And then can you see, I just slightly take off some of the wet of the brush. So it's not uh, absolutely soaking wet through. Right, and then uh, maybe have a little bit here. Sometimes you can just see where you think it might work.
and then just softening again just underneath so we've got lots of mist in this picture very misty dear there we go right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to can you see there now that there is going to just be a little cauliflower so if i just put a little bit more color actually just on above it it just might stop it just get it to blend down there you go give a little brush a brush a little wash and then i'm going to give this a little dry and then finish painting the the uh, lake shore trees Right, so the paper's dry again. I'm just checking that that's fastened down quite nicely. And uh, now we need our strongest colour. So more of your cobalt blue, permanent rose, and a bit of burnt sienna. And we want it to sort of keep on the same tonal range so or the same shading so if it's quite bluey which mine is fairly blue i want to keep that blue so i'm just putting i'm just putting a little bit more cobalt blue into there so just painting down to this horizon line fingers crossed it's not going to leak underneath so we've now got as well just do this little bit actually over here first and then come back to here And maybe just soften it in places, give it a little bit of mist. So I'm just softening. I hope you're enjoying this uh, little challenge. I'm not sure if you might have had this as bought as a present and you might have one day just said, oh, I quite fancy having a go in watercolours and suddenly you're finding yourself painting it. Good to have a go. Right, so uh, we've got that. Now, going to very quickly just put an arrow. Thinking about the, the light coming onto the uh, these posts. So I'm going to have the light coming in this direction. So this side will be lighter, this side will be darker. So ideally, I want a darker, a lighter side of colour at this side so I'm just putting a little bit of water on there let's get that moving as well because it's starting to dry and I want a lighter at this side but I want a nice dark there so a light next to dark just makes the, the just make it show up better now then the time has come as well for the uh, the masking tape and if it has leaked underneath I can show you hopefully what to do to get rid of it so we're just going to remove the masking tape Not too bad. Tiny little bit just there. So I'm just getting a, a flat little brush. Just gonna just take that little bit off. Just like that. Not fiddling too much. Right, so we've got our background painted. We're now going to start and just bring in some um Oh, some of the lake as well so what I want to do is first of all I want to paint a little bit of the lake colour but I want to do it with a nice pale wash um, I'm going to keep this because I might use this for something else um, but I'm going to get some nice clean water and then we can start and paint the uh, the lake in right 
Right, so you've got clean water and hopefully clean brushes as well. And uh, we're going to keep some of the lick um, unpainted. So we want to keep the white of the paper, but we're going to just soften um, some areas. So uh, I'm just reading whether we dampen the paper. And uh, so we're up to stage eight and with a large watery Mix of cobalt and a hint of permanent rose using either Hake or the number 12, begin to paint the lake. Uh, so we don't dampen it first, we go in straight away with the paint. So we want a nice pale wash. So cobalt blue, touch of permanent rose, just a touch, be careful. Tiny touch more. Right. So uh, load the brush and then we're going to just paint in a little bit of the background. I'm going to go over the posts as well. So I'm just taking this. So this is just a first little colour. Leaving some white. Nice and even. And that's that. And then with your uh, flat brush, I'm just going to take out the paint that is on the posts that we just painted over. So we're taking the paint off the posts, the main two posts, and then the smaller two. So what I'm doing is I'm using sort of the side of the brush, dragging it down, and it should remove it while, so it, it isn't, it's damp is the brush, it's not, it's certainly not wet. If you have it wet, it'll cause a bit of a, a nightmare. It just wants to be damp and I actually take my fingers through to remove any excess water. Right so we've got the pores back again so we're going to give this a little dry and then we're going to start to paint the posts. Right so the paper's dry and we're ready to paint the posts so we're actually up to stage 10 we've done well and uh, pick a nice brush i'm using this little uh, chinese sable brush that i quite like and uh, i've got a little bit of the mixture that i used in the uh, sky still there so a little bit of raw sienna fairly watery and then i'm going to um, first of all put the raw sienna on first and then i'm going to mix a darker color to let it blend in so i'm just going to do the these two posts first. So thinking that this side is a lighter side and you could use your rigger here. That'd be quite a nice brush to use. So uh, just mix my rigger. So I want some cobalt blue and some burnt sienna. And you can put a little bit of your uh, permanent rose into there as well if you want there's one little post in and then the other Give it a little reflection. And the other little tiny little one. So start on the other posts. 
and I'm working fairly speedily because the light is starting to go and I like to paint in daylight. I don't like to paint in electric light. So fingers crossed we're going to get, get this done. So a darker side. So I'm just bringing this down. So this is using the rigger brush. Just bringing the rigger down. It's the joy about uh, working in winter. Touch my blue into that. to be nice and dark and go over them little ones as well and then just have a little bit of a reflection as well coming down could do a little bit of the raw sienna as well if you want first and then into your darker colour into the darker. So a little bit of concentration for the posts. There you go. And then we're just going to uh, just paint a little bit of, a little bit more blue, touch of your permanent rose. And this is just, just for a little bit more into the water for a few more reflections. Hopefully it'll just bring the picture forward a little bit. And I'm just going to soften just underneath as well. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed this and it's uh, helped to, to show what to do. I don't know if you could just heard that motorbike going by. <sighs> Disrupting our, our class. Just dampen underneath that little bit. And uh, we're just about there. So I'm looking forward to seeing your pictures. And uh, hearing how you get on. And if you have a couple of goes at this. Absolutely brilliant. Different sizes. And uh, there we go. So uh, that's the first project, Don't Water Posts, painted in watercolours. And uh, just using cobalt blue, permanent rose, burnt sienna and raw sienna. And uh, I look forward to hearing from you. Okay, goodbye.